There is one more element that needs to be clarified or expanded upon regarding the previous, and that's the, the whole discussion around Rome and Ireland. While it appears that the Romans never invaded Ireland, as far as we know, one of the biggest problems with all this is a lack of documentation. Now, there is a missing Roman legion. We just don't, we just don't know. The reason why that can be speculated upon is because even though the Romans never officially invaded Ireland, vast amounts of Roman objects have been found here. Massive amounts of pre-Christian Roman objects, including, fascinatingly, large numbers of Roman coins around the, the Neolithic sites of the Boyne Valley, particularly Newgrange, which suggests that in late Roman, in the late Iron Age period, the late late BC period, that possibly that Roman coins were being used in veneration and other things for pagan pagan gods at places such as Brun, Brunabogna, uh, that's Newgrange. Now what's really interesting about this is because this would have shown and proves a, a thousands of years continuation of veneration at these locations. Remember, Newgrange is from the Neolithic 5,000 years ago, and then 2,000 years ago, apparently people were still going there to venerate pagan gods of some kind, possibly the Crom Cruach, we just don't know. But this is a big problem for uh, archeologists and theologians in that they refuse to believe, they we read my book, The Druid Code, I very much believe that the Druids were a continuation of a proto-shamanic culture that would stretch back to the shamans or whatever they were of the Neolithic, the priests of the Neolithic era. And this is a big problem for them because essentially those things, they, their attitude is those things were built 5,000 years ago, they were locked closed and that was the end of that and they would remain so. I mean, your way here, Karen. Okay. Uh, and, and that remains so. And. Uh, so, you know, not only that, there's been large, you know, the National Museum of Ireland, from what I've been told from an insider, has boxes and boxes of Roman coins and artifacts. Whenever they're found, they're scurried away and hidden because they do not like the idea of a complex communication system between ancient or pagan Ireland and mainland Europe and Britain. We were all backward savages and cannibals until St. Patrick came along. That's the official academic narrative. There was a horrifically bad documentary series on the BBC and a big budget one it was too. Well, the money behind the BBC and everything on the history of Ireland. That I was really looking forward to. It had some fantastic illustrations and it was an absolute shambles from the get-go. They had this idea, the whole thing was that Ireland before St. Patrick came was a, a, a place of savagery. Just like it was just it was just a place of human sacrifice and murder. There was no economy, there was nothing, just savages. And then the, even when the guy said the name Patrick, the, the the swirling BBC score, you know, the music, it really shows you it shows the it runs the BBC, doesn't it? And uh, Suddenly, Ireland enters a gl glorious age, instantaneously, I might add, enters a glorious age. And it was so bad, they even had the resident academic calling Ohm, Ogham. That's how bad it was. And anyway, it was nonsense. And it completely ignored the Roman interest in Ireland. The Roman Emperor Agricola was fascinated by Ireland. And he, he, was, he wanted so badly to come here and take it all. He had estimated how many legions were needed. He reckoned one, but he, only, he said that apparently he was only interested in the coastal areas. And uh, he also mentioned that Roman ports were very well known to Irish sailors. Parents like on the northwest coast, there was a Roman settlement, a Roman port, uh, was trading with the Romans. Now, the biggest fly in this whole ointment is, and it really shows you how the control that likes of Jesuits and the Freemasons in the Royal Irish Academy have of Irish antiquities. It's been known for about 200 years there is a massive Roman site called Drummond in North County, Dublin. It's now under the ownership of Fingal County Council, the local council authority, who finally bought it off the farmer and are protecting it and want a full-scale archaeological investigation of the site properly done to document Roman Ireland. 
It's not happened yet. It was supposed to happen this year. They're citing lack of funds. I think it's much more sinister than that. They do not want a complex or a complex picture emerging of Ireland in the BC period that was not the, the, the land of savages and troglodytes that they, they claim it was before St. Patrick came. Now, you can quickly walk across the Caesarea of Drummond. It's a prominent, it's a peninsula and literally you can find Roman things under the grass, so much of it. They said it was maybe a station post. The, the indications is it was a major site, maybe even a city. There was Romanized Celtic tribes in Ireland, such as the Brigantes. They were British, they were, they were British and they were actually in France as well, but they were Romanized as well. And there was the Belgae and also the Manapi. And these were like, these were Celtic tribes inter, inter, integral into Roman culture. And so there was absolutely connections between both. The thing is that the Romans probably reckoned that if they, they had such difficulty with the Scots, the Irish are probably going to be much worse. And so it, they used the Irish Sea as a kind of an extension of Hadrian's Wall running from north to south. And unlike the Scots, from what we know, they had a very good trade links with the Irish. There was vast numbers of Roman coins in circulation in Ireland in the BC period. They would not have come here by accident. They would not have been... Now, I know the Irish were constantly attacking Britain and having a go at Romans over there, but they would not have had that... That issue would have not arisen had it because it was not a case of just savages... Like, there's one in my book on the Irish Round Towers. I have a quote by an Irish academic, and he basically describes the Irish... Now, this is an Irish academic. He basically describes the Irish raiding civilised Roman villages in Britain and like describing them almost like monkeys playing with coins and didn't understand what they were. And this is what we're up against. This is a legacy of Jesuits and Freemasons who control Irish archaeology and antiquity. And you cannot, you, it, to this day, you're, you're not allowed, you know, when you say that, if you, I go, it's called the History of Art, it's like a five part series, I guarantee you, go to, it's on YouTube, go and look at the first episode and it's laughable. And that was made last year. And that shows the control that these orthodoxy elements still have within Irish antiquities. This could change rapidly in the next few years if Fingal County Council get their way and do a full archaeological survey of Drummond and North County Dublin. It will pave the way for a whole revolution in Irish history and antiquities and will show that Christianity, rather than being the engine which brought Ireland into greatness. This, this is where the whole thing at the land of saints, the scholars, the scholars come from. I mean, there's like so, you know, the, the Goban Sar, the man who built all the ancient Christian works of Ireland is based on an, the Gobanu, an Irish pagan god. You're going to see that they will fight this tooth and nail because, and you will find that the round towers were originally built by pagans, that it was the land of pagans and scholars before it was the land of saints and scholars. And this is like, you know, I see these, these, Irish, these, these Irish patriots need to get it into their head that Christianity is a foreign religion to Ireland and is not our people's religion. And you think you're a patriot because of that, you're greatly, greatly misguided.